Get away from her, you bitch! When they come, and they will, they'll come for you. I have an army. We have a Hulk. I fart in your gender direction. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberries. Is there someone else up there we could talk to? No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. All right, so welcome to A&M Reviews, the first episode in our podcast with my co-host, Salvador Mateos. What's up, Sal? Hey, what's up, Sky Bear? Uh, not much, not much. Um, so we are doing reviews of movies, right? Yeah, that's what we're Correct. doing? Correct, yes. Okay. And the review that we have up is for Wonder Woman. Came out, let's see here, uh, almost a month ago. Shit. <laughs> yeah, kind of long time ago. Yeah. But so. it's still fairly new. I mean, uh, that's why we're talking about it. Yeah. So let's get uh, started with the grading. Okay. Um, so, Sal, what did, what did you think? I actually, okay, out of 10, I gave it a decent 8. Okay. Um, I liked it. There were some few things I didn't like, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay. So what's your grade, Skybear? Uh, I gave it a 7 to 8 out of 10 stars, but I would completely understand why people wouldn't like it. Like my sister, she she didn't like it that much. Oh, nice. So um, let's see. Uh, we heard some backlash that it got online and stuff, but we're going to stay away from that and just give it, this is our personal opinion. We don't expect people to side with us, but if you dis, you're basically against us, let us know yeah. uh, at the bottom. Leave comments, you know, keep the discussion going. So I'm going to start it off, you know. Um, basically, there was a little scene in the movie where um, the beginning, this is spoilers for everybody who hasn't seen it, spoilers. Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna spoil the... the shit out of this movie. Oh so. yeah, don't, don't <laughs> if you haven't seen it, don't even click on this. You know, just stop it, just go see it because yeah. we're gonna basically talk about everything and everybody's mama. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so in yeah. the the beginning, when Aries, when they're talking about Aries and you know the creation of people and everything, the right. CG scene when they show him in the jail when he's aging and he's just trapped down there. He has the beard. He has this CG six pack that kind of <laughs> bothered me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, that's just my point. But I mean, and also, um, Aries reminded me of Harry Potter because he came out of there and I couldn't get it out of my head. He was Remus, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah David. Thewis. It's Remus. I'm like, I can't can't say you know, I hate the guy, but you know. The other thing that really bothered me was um, there's a scene, and this is basically it's three things in one. Yeah. Uh, when she's going to the gala, she's walking to the gala with the with the blue dress, mm. and um, she's carrying her sword. Obviously, people who are watching her from the back, they can see the sword. It's um, going from her back all the way down, and measuring the sword, you know, as I always do, kind of you know visualize it. That sword reached pretty deep. And that kind of, if I was actually looking at it, it would be going between her butt cheeks. So how can she walk with that? Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, that know. kind of bothered me. I actually saw people talking about it on Twitter after the movie. And I was like, hey, I'm like, so it wasn't me. I'm not a pervert, but I thought about that. The Right after that, she walks up to the bad guy. The bad guy just grabs, you know, puts his arms around her like he's going to dance with her. Okay, that doesn't bother me. If it wasn't the next scene. Right after that, she's out the castle, mm. riding on a horse, takes off the dress while she's riding, and underneath she has the armor. Going back to when she was with the guy dancing, yeah. he has his arms around her. The dress is not that thick. How can he not feel the armor? That just basically cut the movie right there, and I'm like, hey, you know, this is awkward. So. Did you see that? Did you feel the same way I did? Or did you say, hey, it's Wonder Woman? I just rolled with it. I was just like, ah, yeah, fuck it. It's a comic book movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, some comic book movies actually have to follow some rules. I mean, gravity's still there. You know. What? What? 
What do you mean they follow rules? This is Wonder Woman we're talking about. Yeah, but I mean, if you're there and I drop a ball, it's going to obey the rules of gravity. I mean, so why doesn't she obey the laws of touching people on the back and not feeling armor? She herself doesn't obey the laws of gravity. She she just leaps she's all over the place. She's like, no, she's fuck a it. god. So that's I mean that's the thing. She's a god, but I mean just because she's a god doesn't mean that. Oh, everything on me, you know, it's like games. You have a weight limit, so just because you carry a lot of stuff doesn't mean that you're going to basically be okay. You know, there's still boundaries, you know, laws that you, you have to follow. That said, the next one is not about anything like that. Next one is. The kissing scene. Why did he has have to go and kiss her? I, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not a romantic guy or anything, but not every woman in movies has to have a guy and fall in love with him. I mean, in the comics, when I read it, I just saw him as a partner that basically went from their world to our world, kind of like linking a bridge. Not really that like, as a love partner. I mean, other than that, I mean, I could be wrong. Other people could have basically said, yeah, they were meant for each other. But at the same time, you know, we read comics and we know that Wonder Woman kind of ends up with Superman. So, well, I mean, that's in the new. Fi- well, I mean, like there's many incarnations of who ends up with who. I mean, like fucking Batman ends up. Well, Batman and Wonder Woman kind of have a thing for each other all the time. But I mean, it's, you know, it just yeah, but I mean, really. she- She's a, she's a superwoman, Superman, Superman. So, I mean, kind of like fits in the world. I mean, there's other stuff that we can go into, but that's into more comic books realm. But that just kind of like didn't piss me off, but just kind of bugged me saying like, okay, really, does she really need to kiss him? Showing that she's kind of inferior. You know, she needs a guy to lead. But um, that's just me. Mm. The last thing that really bugged me. And this basically bugs me in every movie where there's two super powered humans or gods or, you know, mutants. Mm. The fighting scenes, they're overpowered, but you don't really see it in the fight. You just see them hitting each other back and forth, back and forth. Are they causing damage to themselves? Are they not? How can you tell? On top of that, there's people around there. Wouldn't that explosions and everything cause an impact on people around them? But you still see them like fighting like, oh, yeah, he's knocking me this way. There's nobody there. Disregard for that building that just collapsed. What do you think about the final scene? Well, uh, well, to be honest, like that's part of like one of the things I don't like about the movie is that I think the last 30 minutes just ruins is like the bad part of the movie. And, but what what in particular kind of just kind of threw you off? Well, and well, I mean, like regarding your thing with Ares versus Wonder Woman, I think like that's a problem with all superhero movies where, you know, you, um, where you see, you know, two like equally powered, you know, super beings, and they need to fight each other. But it kind of doesn't make for an interesting conflict if they're both of equal power to each other you yeah know? i mean and the same thing they always do is like you know um i think it's just the movie limitations right now that i don't know if we're ever going to get to the point where we're going to see an actual decent super powered human or god fight but as of right now it just seems like you can probably do it a little better because it always goes like person one hits person two flies off comes back hits the other person vice versa keeps going until there's this point where they just realize hey i can be stronger or something motivates them to you know step up and achieve the ultimate form if you can say that and for that brings me to the next point when she starts screaming feeling that scene where she just lost somebody and she realizes that that's who i wanted to be with me and he's no longer here drove her to the next level but really didn't convince me. That scream just sounded like a scream, like she stubbed her toe and had no emotion at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I could see that. Like, they're, well, but I mean, for me, it's hard for me to care about Chris Pine dying because I don't give a shit about Chris Pine most of the time. Well, yeah, I mean, but still, I mean, I mean, like, no, I mean, like, I'll watch a Chris Pine movie, but I mean, like, I don't, I don't really care that much. It's like it's like with The Rock. Like I'll enjoy a good rock movie, but I mean, 
it doesn't mean that much to me. <laughs> no, the thing with the rock to me kind of bugs me sometimes that he's just like, oh, I can pick up that big old heavy machine gun that was just on a helicopter and I had just broken my arm. So it's okay. Lifts it up, you know, kind of like stuff like that just really throws me off. But that yeah. scream, I mean, if I was a director, I'd be like, you know, cut, let's take a second take, you know, your, your, your boy just died. Come on. Yeah. Give yeah. me a more feeling, you know? Exactly. That's how I feel about that. I got to I gotta put out there, Robin Wright, you know, in, in the movie, just, oh my God, fucking love Robin Wright. Like, total badass. I loved it. <laughs> and also, just from when Wonder Woman went from the frontline scene to, you know, going into the, ta- like, the end of the town scene, like, that yes. was the best part of the movie for yes. me. Yes. Like, because as soon as she stepped on the front line, I was like, oh, shit. This movie. Shit like, just got real. It's like, this girl is badass. <laughs> yes. That actually, that's one of the scenes when I, I was in the theater. You can hear all the women just basically slow clap and be like, yeah, yeah. of course. You know, they were just saying, this is our movie. We're taking over kind of thing. Yeah. And I really well, liked I mean, that. Like, even I was like that. I was just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, you no, go, girl. <laughs> I, I took my knees. And the only reason I took my knees was because I wanted a movie that actually showed her that she can do anything a man can. It might be even better, you know. And yeah, when exactly. that came up, I just nudged her. I'm like, pay attention, you know, kind of like you know learn (laughs) exactly like this was a very empowering movie and you know like and finally that we have a decent female-led superhero movie because uh, we've we've only had supergirl (laughs) catwoman and (laughs) electra yeah and to me that scene just made the whole movie right there i mean that basically summed it up basically saying what does Mm. woman wonder woman stand for and yeah you know it's that she basically goes from like you know, telling the guys, are you going to do something or not? And then they're like, well, what can we do? He's like, well, let me teach you. And showed her, you know, her real colors right there, which um, to me was um, a metaphor, basically telling people around the world, you know, when women are, you know, deprived and said, you're not worthy, you're not this. When they basically stand on the sidelines and say, okay, I guess, because society tells me I'm not worth it. I'm not going to do anything. But Wonder Woman is saying, you know, get up we yeah. can show them that we were more than just you know what they want what they think of us yeah but yeah i mean that scene was very important for the movie mm, well, it actually yeah. drove the story yeah be- because it was the best scene sal <laughs> yeah i mean but right before then the story kind of a little slow but that picked it up a lot so exactly yeah and also like in you know the whole crew and for me like for my well other than my regular seven out of eight I would definitely give this 10 out of 10 just because my boy, the native, lives to the end. Oh, yeah, that. I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. And it's like, all right, so you killed you killed my boy in Suicide Squad, but then my boy lived in, in but, but Wonder that's, Woman. That's the movie so, we never talk about. I, I know, Suicide but that's why Squad. it's like, all right, <laughs> is DC making up? Because, all right, I approve. Now, now just put keep doing that for all your movies. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's actually a character in the DC universe, correct? Oh, I have no idea, dude. Because <laughs> I heard somebody saying like that's a, a DC character, and I didn't look into it. But I mean, I was like, yeah, I can see it, you know. Well, I know one. I know like that team is in the DC universe, and I know, um, I know the one of the characters is actually in the universe, but I don't know about the other two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and for me, honestly, like jumping back to the Chris Pine, like ending, like I loved it, honestly. Cause I thought it was like very heartfelt and I actually, it made me care about Chris Pine for once. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I yeah. liked it. Cause, um, but, and like, dude, he... I, I love that line where, you know, that where he's like, you know, I, it's like, you know, you can save the world. I can, and you know, or it's like, I can save today and you can save the world. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. That's when she, when, when she couldn't hear it because of the explosion, correct? And then later on, she realizes that what he said. Yeah. Um, I liked it because this other thing, he's dead, um, which basically motivates her to keep living. Basically, yeah. if he died, she has to keep living and fighting for what she and he believed in which kind of drives the story a little further but i mean what really set it off was that um i don't want him to come back and um, i hear there's going to be a wonder woman too because of how much they made 
Yeah. Do, oh, like I just, I just read the news today that Patty Jenkins is writing Wonder Woman two with fucking Jeff Johns of all people. Wow. And it's like, oh shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> like. I, I think you have my I think you got my money already. <laughs> no, yeah, we're gonna book a ticket for that once it comes out. The thing is, um, I I like how it ended. Um, yeah. The thing was that um, there were some things I didn't like. I already ran through them. That's why I gave it an eight out of ten. But other than that, it's a standalone DC. Fucking got it right this time. Yeah. No Suicide Squad. No Batman <laughs> versus Superman shit. Exactly. This and this is how it thing. should be. Like, you know, there's there's some fucking good action and great cinematography. It's nice to see it's not so doom and gloom all the time in the DC universe. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, they really got the time correct. Uh, the other thing that I was going to, I think we talked about this before, um, was the, uh, it wasn't realistic to the point where they actually, how they treated the secretary. But that's that's a comedy character, so I can give him that. You know, she was a comic relief because, uh, you know, she interacted with Wonder Woman and they kind of fed up each other kind of thing. Like, you know, they joked and she didn't get the joke kind of thing. Yeah. But it worked. I mean, other people might be like, hey, it's not accurately how that got portrayed, which could lead back to my thing, you know, the sword in the dress. You know, give it a little leeway. You know, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it take some you know somebody to see it with you and enjoy it i mean I, we enjoyed it oh yeah yeah definitely and like if anything you know like it could just be a dvd rental like you don't or i i mean look look listen to me fucking dvd rental like you could just rent it from wherever right <laughs> and yeah and it's that would be totally fine you know i don't think it's like a must go theater experience unless like you really want to support wonder woman and you know and like if you liked you know the things that we talked about you know then that's cool then yeah you would enjoy it yeah it's a, good, go, it's a good time it's like a good popcorn flick really yeah go rent it if you like the first movie then you're gonna basically want to go see the second one in the movie theater yeah so for all we oh. know is you know um, next time you want to buy a ticket yeah and what is it and jumping further back uh what is it wonder woman accusing aries like for me just came out of fucking nowhere because, like, in the movie, you just hear Steve Trevor say it's the war to end all wars. And then later on, Wonder Woman just says, it's like, you heard what he said. It's the war to end all wars. It must be Ares. And it's like, where's your fucking evidence? <laughs> like, you just went straight to Ares. Just, okay, here we go. <laughs> no, yeah, that's another point that um, they kind of made her seem like she didn't know a lot. Yeah, because she but was in reality, clueless in that Amazon's... one scene in the town. <laughs> But really, the Amazons are cultured. That's basically another thing that a lot of people left out is like they're cultured. They know about war because they actually lived in peace and they know that it can't always be, you know, sunshines and rainbows. Yeah. They have to be prepared. And Wonder Woman talks about, you know, like the whole, like she mentions, you know, like there's a vast library that they have. So, you know. Yeah. There's that. But then like as soon as she gets to the real, real world, she's like, what's this? What is that? And this Correct. is actually something my sister told me. So, and I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, you got a point." <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, and it's just, and it's like they just made her character so dumb in that scene, and it pissed me the fuck off because it's like this is Wonder Woman, this is my girl in her first movie, and you're fucking it up with this scene. <laughs> no, that that actually that's actually true because they kind of made her a little ditzy, and um, didn't really fit with her character as we know. But yeah, I mean. We Although, could have left it. Except yeah. the ice cream scene. That scene actually is accurate because that's straight from the comics. Yes, so. it is. I wanted to touch upon that because yeah. it was in the comic, came out in the in the DC movie, cartoon yeah. movie, and they put in the in the live action movie. It does play a role in the universe. Because the first time she tasted it, she went crazy for ice cream. Yeah. And also, I did appreciate that scene where she sees the baby because it just, like, showed, you know, how much she cares and, you know, just, like, I don't know. It gave a little hint as, you know, more of her character depth. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I like that. I appreciate this. (laughs) Yeah, well, for me, it was basically saying, like, you know, in their island, there is no babies. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're, they don't age. Because once they're there, they don't age except her, which is kind of another thing. Is did she age? Because she was uh, the 
son of a god? Or because do they really age on the island? Well, obviously, because they started out as kids. Well, yeah, because like you can even see Robin Wright, like, you know, I guess like they, you know, make her look a little bit older as the time passes because that makes sense. You know, then when, the like other... from when we first see her to when we next see her, like when uh, Gal Gadot's introduced. Then the other question is, uh, where yeah. do the kids come from? What? Where do kids come from? Oh, well, I mean, Zeus, obviously. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's well, where Diana came from, so. And plus, we all know Zeus is a fucking player. He's getting around all the time. Makes sense. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he messes around with the ladies. Actually, Zeus just messes around with everybody. <laughs> he's just bored, you know, give it up to the guy. He's God. He's the God of all yeah. gods. Oh, so. and, oh, and then back on track. Um, yes. With david thulis um i thought he well i i couldn't take him ser- uh, you know i couldn't take him seriously as being the villain because i don't know i know he's been villains before in the past yes but he just wasn't that threatening to me and then like especially when he put on like all the armor in the end and he was like all beefed up i was just like nah yeah, <laughs> yeah. like we all know what david thulis looks like nah <laughs> true true yeah and then also um although i did like how he was like that you know he was like being a ghost kind of Mm -hmm. you know at the start of the last 30 minutes and then like you could see like oh yes i've been like slowly influencing people left and right like i thought that was a way better approach to like how is how like him being a god like just changed from what he was into just being that i was like oh that's cool but then all of a sudden, the the whole armor thing came out, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, man, that could have been good. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, but it's nah. <laughs> uh, the same thing as, like, I, I'm strong enough, but with a little extra armor wouldn't hurt. Like, no, really, you're, you're, you're a god. Yeah. You oh, don't need then, an armor. <laughs> and then also, like, there's too many, well, there's, like, a few too many, like, cheesy and campy moments for me in Wonder Woman, because, like... You know, like when uh, the Nazi guy and um, Doctor Doctor Poison uh, yes. come out of you know, like you know, well, killing all those like high-ranking officers, and then like as soon as they lock the door, they just like talk. Well, they say something, and then they like laugh maniacally, and then run up the stairs. And I was like, oh, what is this? The sixties? <laughs> no, yes, yes. That scene. I mean, like you could just basically do without them staying, lingering around, looking through the glass. Yeah. You know, and then, you already know they're going to die, so just go on, and then, walk like, up the even stairs. With that, even with that line with Ares, like, in the end where he... It, it ruined it ruined the whole moment for me when he lives, like, you know, where he, like, lifts his arms up and he's like, then I will destroy you! I was yes. like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, who who the fuck wrote that? <laughs> like, I uh, director should have been like, you're chewing the scene right there, so yeah. you get on Although, with it. Although those two things were more nitpicky, um, but still, it it had to be touched upon because it's like, no, don't do no, that. No, yes. I mean, it's basically our right as moviegoers mm. to basically say you're overacting or you're not doing that right. And that scene shouldn't, you know, be cut out. So, I yeah. mean, come on. There's other pe- movies where they leave unwanted scenes and stuff like that and it makes it to the final cut. And I'm like... Yeah. yeah, you know, what school did you go to kind of thing, you know? Yep. Oh, and then, you know, also, touching upon Dr. Poison. Yes. I was thinking that what if she was just the villain? Like, like what if it was just her? Like at the all... beginning, at the beginning, I thought it was her. Because when she gave uh, the general or the mm. commander the, the, the capsule yeah. to give him strength. I'm like, well, she's kind of pulling his strings. Yeah. So if she could be Ares, and Ares, as we know, and mm-hmm. some comics, uh, indie comics, females do play Ares. Yeah. So I was thinking, are they going to flip this and say, ha, we fooled you, it's her. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, you know, at, throughout the movie, I was thinking, like, is it her? Or, could it? Well, yeah, and then that's the thing, like, what is it? Instead of, well, this is what I think, like, could have been, like, the kick-ass ending, where, you know, like, we could still, like, do, you know, most of what we did already, until yes. the point where 
she, you know, kills the the Nazi guy, and then she discovers, like, oh, shit, there's still a war going on. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. Then, you know, like, Steve, com- like, Steve comes up there, and then, you know, he's like, hey, you know, can we do the mission? Then she could have just gone on and done the mission, and then, you know, had a kick-ass fight with, with Dr. Poison, because, I mean, she probably could, like, poison Wonder Woman somehow. Uh-huh. You know. And then just, like, beat the shit out of her. And then Wonder Woman would have to, like, fight her back, you know, with, like, everything she had. And or then, she could have basically developed a, a poison that brings Wonder Woman's power down to, like, a human level. Yeah. That, and, that's another alternative. Yeah, and then, what is it? We could have even still had David Thewlis be Ares. And yes. you could have fucking saved that shit for, like, the sequel. <laughs> Correct. Or even a future sequel. But, but nah. You could... Nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I see your point that he could basically, you know, say, oh, you won this battle, but I'll win the war, you know, kind of thing, and just leave off. I mean, because yeah. there's, like, there's other battles that throughout history where if you want, Ares could show up and you know, manipulate people. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just doesn't necessarily mean, oh, God, he's already beaten. For all we know is that, you know, he could come back. Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. Um, All right, so and, um, anything else? Oh shit! I, it was just on the tip of my tongue, but and like it had something to do with ah fuck. Nah, I lost it. God damn it! Oh well. But I mean, just throwing it out there. The front line to the town scene is still the best scene, and oh my god, fucking Wonder Woman fucked up some Germans in that, and it was awesome. It was great. I loved it so much. <laughs> From that to the part of the village right before the, the kiss. Oh, and like, that especially was the, the last best dude action scenes. Where she just fucking just wails down on that motherfucker. I was like, <laughs> damn, that dude's dead. <laughs> no, straight out props to Wonder Woman for the action scenes. They were yeah, really and, kick ass. And like, even actually, despite, not like, even, the... not just her, basically the guy who filmed it, who basically shot you mean, it you mean the girl who filmed it excuse you <laughs> girl okay yeah patty jenkins but i'm saying it's yeah. is just one of the best scenes that i've seen recently in movies oh you know yeah. it's it was really good it was well done well shot yeah and like even despite the critiques about it like once again like it's still like i still give it a seven out of eight like i'll watch it again like i thought it was a good movie <laughs> no i mean i'll watch it once it comes out on dvd again um I still give it an 8 out of 10. I mean, because yeah, it's really hard to give a movie a 10 nowadays. But, I mean, story and was really solid in this movie. Basically, it's one of the best DC movies I've seen so far. Yep. With not that many plot holes because other ones can't even hold water. You know, it's, they just drain like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that said, what what else do you want to say about this movie before we leave um i think that was i think we got it all dude (laughs) yeah yeah okay so moving on the next segment is a movie recommendations for the the next podcast yes and i will be recommending for this episode and my recommendation is a movie that came out recently um i should have done this before but i need to look at when it came out or else it's gonna bug me <laughs> okay while well, you look look for that um so people who are listening we're recommending this movie so you guys can go watch yes. it okay, before so. the next podcast so once we come back and we revisit this movie you can follow along and know what we're talking about so you won't be clueless also yeah. at the bottom of the video there's gonna be a link where you can find this movie probably on amazon or another website so yeah, skybear yeah, or however you can find it, just go and watch it. Okay, so it's called The Girl with All the Gifts. I don't know, like, what is it? I remember seeing the trailer, but uh, I guess I missed it when it came out. But it's about a scientist and a teacher living in a dystopian future embark on a journey of survival with a special young girl named Melanie. And so, yeah. So that's what that's the uh, plot from IMDb. Um, but yeah, oh my god, this movie is, is real kick-ass, like, I didn't, you know, to be honest, I didn't like it at first, when I first saw it, dude, Yeah. but 
then like I just kept thinking about the scenes over and over again. And then I saw the movie again and I was like, oh shit, this is actually a pretty good movie. <laughs> so you went to see it two times, basically. What you you're saying you saw it one time. Yeah, yeah I, it left I an impression on you, house. kept lingering. Yeah. Okay, so it kept lingering. You had to go see it a second time to appreciate it. Um, so I haven't seen it. Um, I'm gonna go and get this movie. Yeah, and it's I'm a, gonna it's watch a horror it. movie. Um, if yeah, it's a horror movie. If if you guys don't like horror movies, then I would I would just stay away from it. Um, uh, what year did uh, the movie come out? 2016. 2016, not that yeah. long ago. So nice. Last year, and what was it? Not that many. Well, I'm surprised that not more people have seen it because I mean. What is it? It's got Gemma Argent- well, Arterton. Yeah, Gemma Arterton. Uh-huh. I really like her as an actress. It's got fucking Glenn Close. And it's like, I don't know what the fuck Glenn Close is doing in a in an indie horror movie, but all right, I'm down. <laughs> and it's also got Patty Considine. Um, I don't know if I said any of those names right except for Glenn Close. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, he, like that, well, Patty's been in, uh, let's see here. Oh, he was in uh, The World's End, you know, that Edgar okay. Wright did. And yes. Yeah, he's a really good actor. And he also directed a movie, I think. Yeah, called Tyrannosaur. And oh, shit, dude, that is a, that's a rough movie. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I recommend The Girl with All the Gifts. Go ahead and check it out if you guys want. <laughs> so that's Skyburst's recommendation for next week, Girl with All the Gifts. As well as we're going to be reviewing the new release of Spider-Man Homecoming. So let's uh, leave it at that. No spoilers, Sky Bear. Let the people watch them and we'll come back to that movie next time. And then we'll spoil the shit out of it. <laughs> we'll talk about everything. <laughs> you know, we'll dissect it. Yeah. Okay, so next segment is uh, this is the Minute of Tribute. So you want to talk about this, Sky Bear, or should I just dive right into it? Go ahead, man. You got this. Okay, so we all just happened recently that we lost somebody very special or special to comic book fans. Um, Adam West. Adam West died. Um, what can we say about this guy? This guy was amazing. He died on uh, June 9th at the age of 88. Um, let's talk a little about uh, his history. Well, his career started when he was... Uh, he was born in Walla Walla, Washington in 1928, September 19. Uh, his acting career did not begin until 1950. And then we did not know him as Adam West until 1959 when he moved to Hollywood with his family uh, to start his career or continue his career. And around that time, and um, he started getting roles in different movies, but we did not see him. Big, you know, pull a big role until we he was casted as Batman in the series 1966 series Batman, mm-hmm. the TV series. I mean, for me, growing up as a kid, um, that's one of the reruns that I would see and finally see Batman and Robin fighting crime. I mean, yeah, it was funny, and a lot of people didn't take it seriously. But you were not supposed to take the series serious. It was a joke, and they knew it. There was comedy after comedy. Um, after that, his career uh, kept going. He did other appearances on shows, um, cameos. Uh, he did a, some few voice voiceovers. Uh, recently, he did Batman The Return of the Cape Crusaders in 2016. When he revisited the role as Batman alongside with Bird Ward, Julia Newmart. And recently, just before he passed away, he finished recording the new uh movie for Batman versus Two-Face. Mm-hmm. Um, in this movie, actually, William Shatner plays the voice of Two-Face, Harvey Dent, and also uh, has the cast members of Bro- uh, Burt Ward and Julia Newmart. Uh, they're in it. This movie is already in post-production, so I hope it finishes really soon so we can actually see it. Um, other than that, he's he was in other voiceovers movies such as the Simpsons, Futurama, Rugrats, Hysteria, Kim Possible, Johnny Bravo, Fairly Odd Parents, Family Guy, SpongeBob SquarePants, where he uh in one episode where he played the young mermaid man in the episode called Back to the Past. Yeah, which was really most nice. People know him from Family Guy. <laughs> and basically that's the only T V show that actually casted him as, you know, saying that they didn't want to cast him as Batman, you know, because in most of the 
shows that he actually played himself as the Batman character, and basically they were just, he was just typecasted. But uh, Family Guy basically gave him another shot and said, you know, you can become Adam West, and Major West was his character there. You know, you don't just have to be Batman. Which, in one episode, he actually did come out dressed as Batman, so kind of a little <laughs> funny mm-hmm. scene right there. Yeah. But uh, so a few interesting facts was that um, he was considered to be Thomas Wayne in the Tim Burton movie uh, from 1989, the Batman movie. He was actually considered to be, be Bruce Wayne's father, which uh, didn't happen, which I'm kind of glad because, um, you know, I couldn't see him as... Bruce Wayne's father. I can only I mean, see him as Batman. So. Yeah, like that would have taken me out of it, you know. Although, like, I do appreciate the thought, but still, it's like, nah, that was probably probably for the best that that didn't happen. And here's another fact that you might appreciate: in uh, 1970, he was offered the role for Bond for the James Bond series in the Diamonds Are Forever, but he declined. He did not accept. And later on, he came out saying in one of his autobiographies that he believes that the role for Bond should always be played for as a British character, and I mean, which for I him appreciate. To, thank you. Dude. I appreciate it too. I'm like, thank you, Mr. West, for doing that. I mean, you know, you know what who Bond is, so for doing that, stepping to the side and saying, um, "I let this one go," my hats off to him. And um, with that said, we're gonna leave you with a minute of tribute, which is basically instead of a minute of silence, we actually compile some of his famous lines in a minute, and we honor him that way. Yep. So here you are. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Listen to these riddles. Tell me if you interpret them as I do. One, what has yellow skin and writes? A ballpoint banana. Right. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. This place is amazing. It's just like the gray ghost's lair. It's almost an exact replica. Let me show you something else. As a kid, I used to watch you with my father. The great ghost was my hero. So it wasn't all for nothing. (sighs) Listen to me. My entire future is in your hands. Are you Sarah Connor? The Bible declares an eye for an eye. So let us now take our vengeance on this murderous ocean. (laughs) You won't be hurting anyone anymore. All right, and that was... The Adam West uh, Minute of Silence. Thank you guys for listening to that. And you can, if you want to reach us, where you can uh, shoot us movies that you like us to to watch, or uh, even what? Uh, well, I mean, me and I know me and Sal love comics like a yes. fucking like a lot. So if you want to send us uh, stuff we should read, that'd be cool too. Um, yeah, you could email us at Aguilar Mateos Reviews at gmail.com or you can reach us at twitter and instagram under a underscore m reviews or go to our facebook page like you know all that good stuff at a m reviews so remember please like and subscribe leave comments below letting us know what you like or dislike about this podcast like we said any suggestions comics movies it's always welcome and um until next time Keep watching movies. Yeah.